What we did do Iraq. Let's play hardball. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with this. It appears from our reports that Iraq is on the edge of an all-out civil war with personnel in the American embassy packing their bags and leaving Baghdad for safer areas. We are seeing horrible pictures of massacres, what the United Nations is calling a systematic series of cold-blooded executions. Iraq, the country where the United States has lost over 4,000 lives, where we've sunk hundreds of billions of dollars, a country targeted as a regional pest, is now engulfed in a religious war between two traditions of Islam, with one side, the insurgents, ISIS, calling themselves an all-out enemy of the United States. Again, this is a civil war based on religion. Sunni is the religion of the group ISIS, which is fighting its way to Baghdad. It's got allies joining it along the way, former members of Saddam Hussein's army and Sunnis generally. The government in Baghdad, led by Nouri al-Maliki, is run by and for Shia. It is being backed by the other Shia governments in the region. Region, Iran and Syria. This war between Sunni and Shia has been going on for a thousand years, but it is reaching ahead, a crisis point now in Iraq, where the battle lines are along religious lines. Can this situation get any worse? Is there any way to make it better? Or is it only a question of what price we pay for getting involved once again? And let's not forget who created this hell on earth, the neocons in Dick Cheney and his vessel, George W. Bush, who broke apart the government of Iraq and the unity of that country, who disbanded the Iraqi army and left the Sunnis angry without jobs, without a government, without hope, who are now finding their only future in this war on Maliki and his Shia government in Baghdad. And here's how NBC's Richard Engel, now in Baghdad, paints the scene. It doesn't feel like a city that could fall easily. It feels like a city that has taken its gun out, locked and loaded it, and is holding it in its hands should something happen. Uh, people here expect that there won't be any kind of invasion, that, that those days may have passed because uh, the, the, the communities here have woken up and are now in, in a very strong defensive position. But what they do expect is car bombings, assassinations, uh, militants slipping in perhaps uh, from a neighborhood or, the, uh, or, uh, or who are already here and trying to destabilize the government uh, through, through terrorist attacks. Brian Katulis is a senior fellow for the Center for American Progress. And, of course, Howard Feynman is editorial director of the Huffington Post Media Group and also an MSNBC political analyst. I want to start with you, Brian, in my worst nightmares. As a critic of this war from day one, yeah. when they first started talking about it, when Wolfwood started muttering it out at Camp David right after 9-11, right. I never thought it could get this bad. Yeah. A religious war in which we are somehow the bad guys now in a country we really weren't, we could have avoided almost entirely as just a regional pest. Absolutely. Iraq. We took a strategy of dual containment, containing Iran and Iraq. And in 2003, we ended that. And what that unleashed in terms of the extremism, the sectarianism, and the sort of violent jihadists that we see right now controlling territory, that was There was part. no ISIS and we went not. into Iraq. No, and it's morphed and it's grown and, and it actually is presenting a big threat to the entire region there. Howard. Again, you and I have been talking about this. Uh, you're perhaps a much more journalistic person. I have a strong passion about this. I have to tell you, I thought it was bad news from the beginning. We took apart the Iranian army, uh, the Iraqi army. We took apart the whole culture of that country. We got rid of Hussein. We got rid of his army. We got rid of his government. We threw all those people into the streets. And guess what? They're now joining up with this crowd, well, the two, Sunnis. Two things, Chris. Once, in terms of domestic American politics, you now have a situation where a lot of the people who got us in from the beginning are now trying to reestablish re their credibility somehow by attacking the way the war and the aftermath right. has been managed by this administration. Meanwhile, what, what, what I sense from talking to administration officials... We're going to do a whole segment okay. on that next, by the okay. way. I'll just the, say the briefly... The neocons coming back okay, here. Yes, but, but what the administration officials are, are, are ironically trying to do is find a way to get Iran to help us to cooperate without making it too visible so that such okay. wait, the moderate Sunnis who are left aren't turned off. And that's a very difficult uh, needle to thread. I don't know how they're going to okay, do it. Okay, here's how it started. 2001, we had adversary governments in Iran and Iraq. Yeah. We had a, a Sunni-led government in Iraq. 
there was a pain in the butt, yeah. but it was there. And it was a good buffer for Israel and other of our friends against Iran. It was a good thing to have there. A yeah. pain in the butt, but good to have there. We got rid of the pain in the butt. We now find ourselves in this weird situation, weird ass situation, I'd say, of having to choose between backing the government in Baghdad we helped put there with the alliance of Iran behind it, the alliance of, of Assad behind it in Syria. We are joining the Shia coalition against the Sunnis who in countries like Saudi Arabia, in countries like Jordan and in Egypt and in North Africa are generally much more moderate and more pro-Western and less trouble for Israel. So we're going to find ourselves on the side of the biggest problem we have in the world, which is Iranian Shia fanaticism. We're going to be on their side so that we don't have to confront this ISIS group now that we created, which says now it's saying in a blood curdling way they want to get us. Well, this is why I think it's important. What President Obama said is we could offer some support to this guy Maliki, the prime minister of the Iraqi government, but he's got to work with other Sunnis. He's got to have a national you're unified not going to do that. response. And if he's not going to do that. We have 140,000 troops in there trying to get him to do that. That's right. And if he's that. not going to do that, we're not likely to act and pick sides in this sectarian civil war. I think what we're going to do is try to contain the threat, right? It's important. I don't think you can talk a do, turn a dog into a cat. I mean, he is what he is. Yeah, yeah. He's a Shia nationalist who has been in there fighting Whoa. a Sunni government his whole career, and we're going to turn him into but, Mr. Kumbaya. But, but yes, I, think to, I think today John Kerry, in an interview that he did, uh, indicated that he certainly wouldn't mind if Maliki would, would go. I right. mean, uh, the, the not-too-subtle message from what John Kerry said is, we'll leave it up to the Iraqis to decide. When he, when he was invited to defend Maliki, Kerry did not do so. But the key thing is what we are able, according to my understanding, is what we can possibly work out with Iran that isn't too obvious right. to, well, to let's talk, anger and upset the moderate Sunnis. Let's, That's let's, the situation we're I in. No, how do we work with Iran without becoming their exactly. friends again? Exactly. We still have the nuclear threat from them. Anyway, here's how our government's operating. An interview today with Yahoo News. Secretary of State John Kerry was asked about the possibility of the United States, our government, again getting involved militarily with airstrikes against this uh, insurgent group. Here's what he said. Let's watch. Well, not the whole answer, but they may well be one of the options that uh, are important to be able to stem the tide and stop the movement of people who are moving around in open convoys and trucks and terrorizing people. I mean, when you have people murdering, assassinating uh, in, in, a, in these mass massacres, you have to stop that. I hear we can't do that. I hear when you have a bunch of people that are sort of partisans, they're not really organized military, they're not yeah. moving in columns. You can't go in there even with drones and start killing people. You won't be able to know your targets. You need good intelligence from the ground. And at Where do we point, get that from? Yeah, you need it from partners on the ground or some of our operatives, but I don't think we have that presence that we did before. So I think you're going to see a very careful stance on the part of this administration. We're going to try to, again, contain and safeguard the threat. The most do we want to kill Arabs again on international television? I hate the sound. I am not a dove. I am a dove. I'm not a pastor. Why is it good in our interest? Again, I go back to what we've been doing now for 12 years, killing Arabs and Islamic people in international terror. They're the only people we kill, by the way. Well, there is blowback for that. But the thing is, if they're we trying want to, to be if, killing if, ISIS if they're people, try, if they're trying to kill us, like one of the things that both President Obama and President Bush has done is these drone strikes, which are controversial, right? But they actually have stopped attacks on the United States. And, and there's but they're evidence against that, individuals, not armies. Exactly. And that's that's why I think action here is going to be very targeted if it happens yeah. at all. And by the way, if, you, if you're trying to cooperate with Maliki government, for the Maliki government to tell you whom to hit, those are not the people whose word we want to believe at this point. Yeah. That's I think he'll tell us to kill Sunnis. Yeah, but that's not the, yes, exactly, but you can't, it's, it's a hopeless situation because from the okay, let's take a look at this. Is, they okay. prosper propaganda-wise from our attacks. Okay, here's the tricky question again. We got a religious war going. The Sunnis are on one side. They don't like us. They're going after the government in Baghdad. We stood up. The, the government we stood up in Baghdad is supported by the Iranians and King Assad or President Assad over there in Syria. All our enemies agree on the guy we're supporting. Anyway, according to Secretary Kerry, again, the administration, our administration, is willing to talk with Iran about the security situ situation in Iraq. We're going to start talking to these guys. In an interview with Yahoo again, he was asked if the United States would ever cooperate militarily with Iran to quell the violence in Iraq. Let's watch the secretary. We need to go step by step and see what in fact might be a reality, but I wouldn't rule out anything that would be constructive to providing real stability a respect for the Constitution, a respect for the election process, and a respect for the ability of the Iraqi people to form a government that represents all of the interests of Iraq, not one sectarian group over another. It, it has to be inclusive, and that has been one of the great problems of the last few years. 
Let me ask you, Brian, you focus on the region more than I do, and I have to ask you, why does he seem surprised? Well, why I is think, Kerry, uh, as the British would say, caught wrong-footed on this? We had never heard of ISIS before. There was no talk of some moving calm that was really going to threaten Baghdad, even take as much of the country as it's done already. This has been dramatic and totally surprising to people in Washington. I haven't heard that even the neocons or the usual suspects like John McCain or Lindsey Lindsay Nelson. We didn't hear Lindsay, the alarm bells. They weren't right. yelling about this until now we're on the verge of uh, when it looks to be a civil war. Well, I think part of it is we stuck our head in the sand after we got bin Laden. And this threat has migrated. It's morphed in different ways. And I think people here have been talking about it, people who follow the region, people who, who travel there quite a lot. But quite a lot, America has been disengaged to all of these dynamics. Why did we let Maliki turn his government into a sectarian government, which was going to fuel this fight? That was a mistake. I think. Why we, did we do it? Well I, well, I think in part because we wanted to get out of Iraq, and we all wanted our troops out of there. And the quickest, simple solution was there. And I think it was a mistake by both the Bush administration and the Obama administration not to use leverage uh, in terms of our money and our resources. We're still spending lots of money there. We've got more than 10,000. Could Americans. we have stayed another 10,000 guys in there? No. Um, I, I don't think that's the real issue here. The look, real could issue, we have? Because that's what the people on the right are saying. We should have kept 10,000 or so in there. Look, uh, George Bush couldn't negotiate this agreement with Maliki. He, he, he insisted on a date certain for U.S. troops to leave. Maliki. President, yeah, pr President Obama uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted, wanted to actually renegotiate that, and the terms were not acceptable to us and to our military commander. I yeah. wonder whether Maliki isn't happy right now. He's got Iran helping him out. He's got Syria helping him out. He's got us worried. He's got all the cards on his table. All the Shia are united behind him now. And he's involved that maybe saving two thirds of the country, well, but it'll all be his. Well, it's probably a little. A lot of the oil. It's probably a little too late for John Kerry's studied silence about the future of Maliki because you're right. The only way Maliki survives now okay. is as a sectarian okay, shield. By the way, that Secretary of State who I like a lot Me too. was w awaiting orders. Yes. For the president. I agree. He wasn't calling the shots. I agree. Anyway, thank you, Brian Katoas. Thank, thank you for joining us. Your expertise, Howard, as always. Coming up, the same people who were whooping up Iraq war fever in 2003 are back at it again. The usual suspects. Once again, they're talking about U.S. military engagement in Iraq. They were wrong then, dead wrong, and they're wrong again, I think. So why does anyone even listen to the neocon chorus? Plus, how bad have things become for the Republican Party that people are openly, Joe Scarborough for one, for drafting Mitt Romney? Romney. Yes, it's that bad. Who are you going to call? Chris Christie, Jeb, or Mitt? And those bumps in the Hillary book roll out. People want the, got the, they want the impression of candor from her. They also want politically correct answers, though. But isn't this what politics is, getting them both right? Finally, let me finish tonight with the breakup of Iraq. Isn't this what we did to the place? And this is hardball, the place for politics. Looks like the Garcia's got a new car. What'd they get? I don't know. Sure doesn't look like a Buick. I'm outside. Where are you? I'm right here. I'm in the Buick. I don't see a Buick. Take a fresh look at Buick. It just might surprise you. Ooh, that's not a Buick. That's what I told him. Wow. This is nice. Oh, my. Enjoy the dealer experience ranked highest by J.D. Power. And get 0% financing for 60 months on the entire Buick lineup. When folks think about what they get from Alaska, they think salmon and energy. But the energy BP produces up here creates something else as well. Jobs all over America. Engineering and innovation jobs, advanced safety systems and technology, shipping and manufacturing. Across the United States, BP supports more than a quarter million jobs. When we set up operation in one part of the country, people in other parts go to work. That's not a coincidence. It's one more part of our commitment to America. Another historic low for Congress. A new Gallup poll finds that only 16% of Americans approve the job that Congress is doing. That's the lowest number for a midterm election year since Gallup began asking the question 40 years ago. And it's in line with another Gallup poll from last month showing just one in five Americans say that most members of Congress should be reelected. The lowest number ever. And we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. That should just about do it. Excuse me? What are you doing? Uh, well, we're fine-tuning these small cells that improve coverage, capacity, and quality of the network. <laughs> it means you'll be able to post from the break room. Great! Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? A little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to go. Oh, okay. AT&T is building you a better network. 
the fun is back. We're barefoot. We're barefoot. Don't let cracks and splinters spoil your fun. Bear Deck Over gives new life to old wood and concrete. More than a stain, it extends the life of your deck, fills cracks and covers splinters. With barefoot. Don't replace, resurface. Do the barefoot thing. With Bear Deck Over, exclusively at the Home Depot. Good, better, bear. When you've got the 2014 North American Truck of the Year, offering the most innovative cargo bed in its class, you can do a lot. You just don't have to hear a lot. Introducing the all-new Chevy Silverado from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting pickups on the road. Current non-GM owners and lessees use special pricing to get a total value of $9,100 on this Silverado 1500 All-Star Edition. See your Houston area Chevy dealers. Hey, I'm not cool in the whole neighborhood. Now that's one way to cut your electricity bill. But what you really need is a free Reliant Home Energy Checkup. We'll point out money-saving ways to make your home more energy efficient, faster than you can say, what are you, born in a barn? Reliant Home Energy Checkup. Welcome to Reliant. How can we help you? Welcome back to Harbor. Well, they're back. The force in force. The people who relentlessly sold us the virtues of invading Iraq have returned to push American intervention anew. Paul Wolfowitz, Bill Kristol, and this morning on Morning Joe, Paul Bremer himself, who was U.S. presidential envoy to Iraq from 2003 to 2004. And, of course, the entire Kagan family was featured in today's New York Times with a reference to Robert Kagan's recent cover story in the New Republic pushing for U.S. intervention. Headlined, Superpowers Don't Get to retire what our tired country still owes the world owes the world i love it but it's wise to remember what some of these neocons told us before the iraq invasion like paul wolfwitz on how the war would practically pay for itself the oil revenues of that country could bring between 50 and 100 billion dollars over the course of the next two or three years we're dealing with a country that can really finance its own reconstruction and relatively soon so why did we have to do it for a trillion dollars? Or Bill Kristol's testimony before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee back in February 2002, when he said, quote, American and alliance forces will be welcomed in Baghdad as liberators. And who could forget this line from Kate Edelman? I believe demolishing Hussein's military power and liberating Iraq would be a cakewalk. And today in Morning Show, Paul Bremer defended his actions and those of the Bush administration in Iraq. The Iraqis lusted to choose their own government. Let's not get into this. We're trying to right. shove democracy okay. down somebody's throat. Right. That's just simply not true. Well, right. we did take Saddam Hussein out, didn't we? Right. We did. America did, not the Iraqi people. Right. Therefore, what? Therefore, we then tried to impose democracy in that country. We did not impose democracy. We didn't just want to go in there and try to give true. them a the democracy? The facts are completely in the other direction on that subject. Anyway, it's not the point right now. We are where we are. We are where we are, thanks to you. Anyway, joining right now is Mother Jones Magazine's <laughs> David Corn and the Washington Post's Eugene Robinson, both are MSNBC political analyst Gene. Okay. This is the guy. This guy. He Let's dressed well. Him. I like okay. him with the boots and the nice suit. Yes. But he's the guy that disbanded the Iraqi exactly. army, the Iraqi government. He debathicized so that nothing was left for half or a third of the country except to join any country, any group that would overthrow the government. Exactly. He created the vacuum. Right. And he is responsible, I think, if, if you're going to put it, one guy who's yeah. responsible for a lot of the mess that happened in Iraq, you'd have to point right at Paul Bremer. It was a terrible decision. I know. And I think David uh, I think, I I think, think you're David being too hard. I no. think you're being too hard on him. Because you know, what we, Isikoff, Mike Isikoff and I, in, in the book we did, it was very clear to us hubris. that these hubris, before they went in, they had no idea what to do afterwards. <laughs> Bush, Cheney, okay, they have meetings at the White House, what are, and they never asked the question, what comes next? Bremer was sent out there and said, basically, figure it out yourself. So, yes, he made a lot okay, of Okay, let me take the name of your book. Right, okay, but we go in there as the Americans. Uh, we overthrow yeah. the government. We march in. If you don't do what we tell you, shoot the guy. You take over the government by force. That's yeah. how we did it. 
Mm -hmm. And then we said, you know what, we're going to make, we're going to get into nation building and we're going to get rid of all this structure of Sunnis mm -hmm. governing this country for 300 years. We're going to put the other side in, crowd, in, in charge. Yeah. And then we're going to, and then by the way, we're going to debathicize like we denazified. We're going to pretend it's Europe again, like we always make that mistake, especially mm -hmm. neocons. And we're going to liberate these people. Well, guess what yeah. their idea of liberation was? Their idea of liberation was Shia now call the shots. Yeah, sure. 300 years yeah. of revenge. Yeah. 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 We call that yeah. democracy. Well, it's been an authoritarian, authoritarian government, incompetent, inept. They've put down the Sunnis. So we have this situation today when people in Sunni areas are either almost tolerating ISIS because, as, as extreme as you they know are, they're because they, they're going up it's, against the Shia well, military, exactly which, the, which they hate, which they see. Look at the captive nations. The the it's just like the captive nations, Sunni. the captive nations of the Soviet Union before World War II. Yeah. When the Nazis came in, at least in the first few hours, yeah. great, we're getting the great. Soviet Soviets off our back, yeah. then they realized what they're dealing with, the SS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, the, the Sunni tribal leaders in those areas that ISIS has taken over have made it a strategic decision yeah. that, that look, you know, we're better off, let's let's go with the Islamic, the, the crazy Islamic what is, okay, let's, let's for go back. a while. Let's go back. The enemy because of my enemy is my okay, friend. Okay, so friend now we that. find ourselves in the predicament we talked about in the first segment tonight, which is now we find ourselves in having to, to in this Hobson's choice. Yeah. We can't support the, 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 uh, the certain insurgency over there they hate us the sunnis even though maybe they got a beef then we get, we can't support the shia government over there no. because they've got the iranians on their side they've got office assad's son on their side they've got the whole works that we've been fighting over there since day one since they took over our embassy back in 79 the shiites mm -hmm. right? right right so where are we well what do the neocons want us to the do the enemy of our enemy is now our enemy and our friend right because because yeah. well, we now the, have to be on the same side as iran if we want to stop isis except we okay. can't be but now we, but now we have, the, the neocons themselves are coming out and, and the hawks like John McCain and they're completely confused. They, they don't so. know what to do. Lindsey Graham, Graham looks, looks a little wacky yeah, right Lindsey now. Graham and John McCain, who usually are two peas in the pod, are Siamese twins, What's their now, now disagree because one of them wants to help get in there and work with Iran. Lindsey Graham says that. Yep. If we have to work with Iran, we will. And John McCain says, what are you smoking? But last week... Did he say, what are you smoking? No, I guess, but he says, you're crazy. He calls it crazy. Last week, John McCain got on the Senate floor and gave this speech about how everyone in the national security team of the president should be fired immediately. What was his big idea? We should call Dave David Petraeus and asking what to do. I know. Let me tell you about it. Let me tell you. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham this week on one of the Sunday shows, the one that's on earliest uh, before me depressed. He was saying we have to bomb. We have to go in. We have to bomb ISIS. Oh, yeah. oh. Then we have to go into Syria and get involved militarily there. Okay. I mean, my God, we're going to okay. be shooting everybody. So just start with, yes. start, with, start, with, start, with, start with bomb ISIS. Sounds like a great idea, right? Bomb the cr these, these crazy evil people. They happen to be in the middle of civilian population. Yeah. If we, 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 there's no neat way just to bomb them and not bomb civilians and, who, and, and, and turn the turn the. And it's not like South land. Pacific. Once again, there's no Frenchman on the ground saying over here, yeah. over there. By the no. right degrees, how can, no targeter. How can no. we do? How can we engage in military activity with a partner like the Maliki government, who we can't trust? We can't give them weapons okay. because they can't even okay. hold on to their own uniforms. Okay. And if what they brought the neocons back in the in the, in the parlance? Why meet the press system? Well, Paul Wolf would shows him. I thought it was an old show. I'm sorry. That, he was there. And then we see a big spread yeah. today in the New York Times on the whole Kagan family. The Robert, yeah. Fred, the whole gang of them. Mm -hmm. Intellectuals, all pro-war in this thing. And then you've got you got Bremer back. Well, this, this is I mean, like, what made them come in this, out of the this, dark? Well, this is like when True Blood goes off the air, HBO can have a new vampire series with okay. these guys because they won't, you can't put they them down. They did hide for no, 10 no, years. No, no, yeah, but, but no matter how wrong they were back then, and they all were wrong. Bill Crystal, Krauthammer, you know, they all were wrong again and again on WMDs and sectarian violence and the cost of the war, people still okay. go to them, they put a microphone in front of them and say, tell us what okay, you think. Okay, here's my question. They shouldn't be doing that. And this that. is what's going to American people want to know from both parties, <clears throat> from all journalists and commentators. Yeah. If, and I don't believe this, but if the argument was we went into Iraq and got involved in this impossible country because we were concerned about a nuclear weapon. That's what they told people, that, right. a nuclear weapon. Once we found out that they didn't have any nuclear weapons, which took a couple days, mm -hmm. and they had nothing, no process of building one, why didn't we just come home? 
Well, why did, now, why didn't we do If that was the reason, we didn't go into the nation build. We didn't go in there to solve the fight between the Sunnis and the Shia. If our that's reason a, that for going the in reason. there. That wasn't well, the reason. That wasn't the reason. That's, 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 that's what they that told us. stated reason. That wasn't was the reason. reason. As you well know. Because we were I'm just right? talking this, their this, language. This and I, to the American people want to know why we lost 4,000 lives. I'm asking you guys. Uh -huh. If they yeah. told us the truth why we went in, yeah. we should have left pretty but quick. No, they didn't tell us the truth. Okay, thank you, David Cord. Thank you, Gene Robinson. We're up against this conundrum. We're going to be facing this for years. Up next, the former congressman who called himself Carlos Danger is back in the sideshow. Maybe it's time he took a break from Twitter. Talk about for the sublime that are ridiculous. This is Hardball, the place for politics.